the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, has unlimited power. Brakatai Yahweh, Brakatai Yahweh Shai, Brakatai Yahweh, Brakatai Yahweh Shai, Brakatai Yahweh, Brakatai Yahweh Shai, Kol Halal Lai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's Hebrew. Interpret, bless Yahweh, bless Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father, Yahweh, in the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. <coughs> Salakia. All right. Uh, this is Revelations chapter 19 and 1. And this is the account, which is the vision. Okay. When this place that you call America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, which means great confusion, is destroyed. This place has to go down. Because the Lord have already said it from the very beginning. So this is Revelations 19 and 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord, our power. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he have judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornications and have avenged the blood of his saints at her hand and that great whore is what america which is really the house of esau so it says for he have judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication all right through the philosophies uh false philosophies through the religions through the democracies okay do the id the id the ideology of uh of how the mind is and how societies are controlled all right therefore it says which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and have avenged the blood of his saints at her hand and again they say they said hallelujah and her smoke rose up forever and ever and the four and 20 elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped the most high that sat on the throne saying to Wab, hallelujah. All right. So after these things was done and this place, America was destroyed. The elders, the four and 20 elders and the four beasts that sits in the spirit room with the heavenly father, they fell down and worshiped the most high. All right. And they said, hallelujah. Okay. It says, verse 5, and the voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, Yahweh, all ye his saints and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a mighty, mighty thunders saying, hallelujah, for the Lord Yahweh, uh, omnipotent reigneth all right it says for the lord yahweh omnipotent reigneth now when you look this word omnipotent and i have a trouble saying this word omnipotent omnipotent it says of a dignity a deity excuse me of a deity having unlimited power able to do anything <laughs> that is power from the almighty yahweh bahashem yahweh shai man okay the lord is omnipotent of a deity having unlimited power unlimited power able to do anything all right going back this makes me think of the birthright between Jacob and Esau when Esau came out red first. All right. But she was supposed to receive the birthright. But through the will of the father, the Lord wanted Jacob to receive the birthright. And that situation went down when Jacob supplanted Esau two times. OK, the birthright and also for the um, the first son inheritance, you know. And that was all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai. Because it is written that the Lord said he have loved Jacob and hated Esau. 
All right. You can get on Romans nine where it says, um, matter of fact, let me, uh, let me get that real quick. And I come back. This is Romans chapter nine. And, um, and 10, and not only this, but when Rebecca also have conceived by one, even by our father's Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Yahweh according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. All right, so that proves the fact that the Lord' purpose was that Jacob was the chosen, not Esau. Okay, so let me go back to Revelations 19 and let's see what the strong concordance say about omnipotent. Omnipotent, all right. Strong's G, 3841, Pantacrator, Pantacrator. It says, he who holds sway over all things. Ooh, the ruler of all, almighty God, which God represents the Hebrew word Allah, which represents power. All right. He who holds sway over all things. All right. Um, the all ruler, the all ruling, almighty, omnipotent. Whew. Yeah, let me uh get a quick precept. This reminded me of Isaiah. Chapter 45, verse 7. It says, I form the light. Now, this is the Heavenly Father. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Because the Lord is omnipotent. Okay? He's omnipotent. He is the all power. Matter of fact, ah. Let me, uh, <laughs> Salakia, I'm everywhere, but the Lord is omnipotent, okay, An omnipotent of a deity having unlimited power, able to do anything, okay, so now Isaiah 45 and 7, I form the light and create darkness, <laughs> I make peace and create evil, I, the Lord Yahweh, do all these things. <laughs> all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Because there is no limit to our Father who art in heaven and his power. Okay? And that's why the scriptures say, Nor I nor ear have heard what's in store, okay, for the elect, you know, in the kingdom of heaven. We don't know um, or could imagine what possibly the Lord is going to give his elect, you know, when he gives his gifts for you know overcoming the world and believing in the lord in the time of his absence man you know this is beautiful man all right the lord is omnipotent okay omnipotent and i'm keep saying it because i have a uh i can't kind of say that word right so <laughs> let me go back to that definition <laughs> it says of the deity, of a deity having unlimited power, able to do anything. So we can pray to the Lord and the Lord can do anything. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, man. Now, let me get this uh, last precept. Which is Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 and uh, 36. And behold, thou cousin Elizabeth, she have also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. 
for with, for with the most high, nothing shall be impossible. You see, because the Lord is omnipotent, omnipotent of a deity having unlimited power, able to do anything. <laughs> and that's our father, man, which is a righteous power. OK, who governs the uh, universe and ruleth in the kingdom of men. Now, I want to get another one since it came to mind. Second Edger 6 and 1. It says, And he said unto me in the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or ever the winds blew, before it thundered and lightened, or ever the foundation of paradise were laid, before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together, or ever the heights of the air were, lift, were lifted up, before the measures of the firmament were named, or ever the chimneys in Zion were hot, and eerie the present years were sought out, and, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned, before they were sealed that have gathered faith for a treasure, then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. Now this is the Heavenly Father, okay? Because he was, he is also a title for the Lord is the Ancient of Days, okay? He stood before the world, before our existence, before anything existed, man. So it's the Lord, okay, that, um, that, uh, that uh, brings down one and brings up another. It says, then did I consider these things and they were all made through me alone and through none other. By me also they shall be ended and by none other. Then answered I and said, which is Edris speaking to the angel as a media to the most high. He says, then answered I and said, what shall be the part in the sunder of the times or when shall be the end of the first? And the beginning of it that followeth. And he said, because Edris is asking, when is the end? When is the end going to come? Okay. So this is verse eight. And it said, and he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. So why is the Lord telling uh, Edris? about Jacob and Esau as if Edris don't know about Jacob and Esau because Jacob and Esau is going to play a major role when it comes to the end of the world okay the end of uh this world which is the Greek word eon I believe I think it's yes eon uh rulership or age all right so the Lord Yahweh is talking to Edris and bringing up the story of Jacob and Esau, you know, these are the, these are the two main characters that's going to play out in the end of times of the end of days. So it says, then answered I and said, what shall be the part in the Sunday of the times or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So when is the end and when is the beginning of the kingdom is what Ezra is asking. It says that he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. And I also got to make mention. He made mention of Abraham. He made mention of Isaac. and He made mention of Jacob. OK, because these are the chosen line and seed that the heavenly father have chosen. All right. So it says when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. And why did Jacob's hand held uh, Esau? Because they were fighting in the womb, which this actually is symbolic for Jacob taking Esau out of power because it goes right hand in hand when um, Edris asks, when shall be the end of the first? What's the first? Esau. And the beginning of it that followeth. That's Jacob coming right behind him. Okay? So the Lord is comparing, the Lord is basically telling Edris, the same way they were born is the same way how the end is going to play out. All right. Jacob is going to be next. Esau was first, but Jacob has the last. Okay. It says, 
um, for Esau is the end of the world. And then he just tells you, he tells Ezra straight up, Esau is the end of the world. So do we believe that we're living in Bible prophecy? Yes, we do. Is this the year of prophecy? Yes, it is. Okay, you see what's going on in the world. You see who's ruling the world. The Chinese people are not ruling the world. All right, the Arab people are not ruling the world. But who? Esau, Edom. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right. The hand of a man is betwixt the hill and the, and the hand. Other questions, Edris, ask thou not. All right, so, you know, I want to keep going on, but I hope this lesson was edifying. You know, brothers already know these scriptures. So, for those who are of the hopeful elect, freshly fruit coming in, you know, hope this is edifying. Our Heavenly Father is om omnipotent, okay? Omnipotent of a deity having unlimited, unlimited power able to do anything man and that's why Yahweh Shai said pray without ceasing he said uh also scriptures say you receive not because you ask not okay we shall always pray unto the heavenly father because there's nothing impossible that the lord can't do you see and this is the one okay the heavenly father who created the universe man okay that made earth his footstool and heaven his throne so I'm going to say, call halal la Yahweh ba shimmy hawa shai. Call halal la Yahweh ba shimmy hawa shai. Call halal la Yahweh ba shimmy hawa shai. Brakata Yahweh, brakata Yahweh shai. Brakata Yahweh, brakata Yahweh shai. Brakata Yahweh, brakata Yahweh shai. All right, which means all praises to the Father, Yahweh, in the name of the Son, Yahweh shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles who taught me this truth and elders who taught me this word. And salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. Shalom.